This video does not promote violence. The video depicts the process of leaf feeding a predatory insect. If you are sensitive, please stop watching this video. Hello. Today I received this enormous box from Ant Kingdom. Based on the engraving on the box, you can guess what's inside. The size of this gift packaging truly impressed me. You see, I have an old small ant farm that's been around for about 5 years. The ant colony living there has become quite large. Additionally, the old ant farm has become quite cluttered and lost its appearance. That's why I decided to order a new, larger ant farm from the online store Ant Kingdom, with which we've been collaborating for many years. They truly have great and reliable ant farm. The cool packaging protects the ant farm from mechanical damage during shipping. Inside the box was a beautiful envelope containing a message from the store's author to an enthusiast, in other words, to my mycologist. This leaflet serves as a care guide for ants, with many helpful recommendations. How to properly place the farm in your apartment or house, what to feed the ants, how to decorate the arena and much more. Let's start unpacking the ant farm, and right away I'm greeted with various fun decorations that look like mini construction sets. It's interesting to assemble them and see what they'll turn into. Besides the mini construction set, the package includes various cool stones, flocked grass and interesting two-colored sand. By the way, it looks very symbolic. There's also a stone covered in moss, various trees, houses, fences and even dinosaurs with rabbits. There's a large drinker and a pipette for humidifying special gypsy mares inside the farm's labyrinth. I'm just shocked at how huge it is. I considered my old farm to be big, but now my perspective on sizes has completely changed. The length of the farm is a whopping 41 cm. The lateral weaves in 31 cm. And of course, this model features a massive arena. The arena measures 16 by 20 cm and is almost 9 cm high. This is where the decorations from the set are placed. On the arena, I also found a spare gypsum disc for one of the humidification zones, as well as a packet with spare fasteners and shutters. By the way, speaking of humidification zones, there are three of them, plus a drinker on the arena. This is the right decision, as the ant farm is designed for a large ant colony that will reside in such a huge labyrinth. Once we're done with the farm, it's time to start assembling the decorations for the arena. I began by assembling the house, and honestly I enjoyed this activity, as it's been a while since I've put together any kind of construction kits. At first, I didn't quite assemble the walls of the house correctly, as I couldn't fit the roof. But a little later I resembled the structure, and I succeeded. Just take a look at what a cool house for ants turned out. Then I started assembling the dinosaurs. In the assembly kit I found a toothpick, that's used to secure the dinosaurs' parts. To put it briefly, I'm really hooked on this activity. So, here's how many decorations come in the set for the large ant farm. Actually, this isn't everything yet, as I've only assembled the figurines and we need to decorate the farm's arena with more than just figurines. For this, I grab another packet containing a stone with moss. It has such a cool texture, and as far as I understand, it uses flock grass, which is used to create dioramas. Everything looks realistic, and from a distance it truly gives the impression of natural moss. The decorative stones somehow remind me of candies. Even though I feel tempted to try them, I won't risk it. Even in this packet there were decorative plants on stands. I decided to enhance the artificial lawn and attach double-sided tape to the bottom to securely fix it to the arena's floor. And so I began decorating the arena, starting with placing the lawn. After the lawn, I decided to pour colored sand. In the set it comes in bright and colorful shades. Given my experience in the maintaining ant farms, I know that over time the sand on the arena will mix, 
Therefore, I decided to mix the sound of two colors evenly from the start. And look how cool it turned out! Now we pour the sand onto the arena and evenly spread it across the entire arena surface. The easiest way to do this is with a brush. Then we add these cool colored stones. Next, we place the little house and the stone with moss. Now from our set we choose interesting figurines and place a few of them inside the arena. You can change the rest of decorations to suit your mood. There is no need to place many decorations at once. It will look much neater and more aesthetic. Done! Only the drinker needs to be installed. And the gypsum chambers of the labyrinth need to be moistest. Now we can start the process of transferring us. And now you will finally see what my old aunt farm has turned into after five years of housing nuts. By the way, for those who watched the video about Cardiceps and the infection of that ant colony, as you can see, nothing happened to the colony. But it was already time to change the ant farm, as the large colony was becoming crowded in it. Also, over the years, the farm lost its aesthetic appearance. For transferring ants from the one farm to another, I will use a small piece of silicone tubing, which needs to be attached to the entrance of the new farm and the exit of the old one. When everything is ready, you just need to open the shutters of both farms, so that ant scouts start exploring the new territory. Then they will inform the ant colony about the new place, which is much better than the old one. Unfortunately, the old farm wasn't designed very well, and at the bottom of the farm, when I lifted the shutter, a small hole appeared, through which a few ants escaped at first. But later I returned them to the new farm. Also, the process of transferring an ant colony is not a quick one, and it can take from one to three days. So, patience is needed. To expedite the transfer process, the new ant farm needs to be covered with a piece of cardboard, and the old ant farm needs to be brightly lit. This is roughly how ant transfer takes place in the time lapse. It might seem that the ants are running back and forth, and there's no actual migration, but that's not true. Ants carry and lava and eggs laid by their queen. Only after all this will the entire colony move. And that happens only after ant scouts fully explore the new farm's territory. At the moment, the entire colony has completely moved. And all ant lava and eggs have been brought to the humidity chambers. Now comes the moment many of you probably clicked on this video for, as I indicated an intrigant question in the title. So, what will happen if earwigs get into the ant farm? I wonder how many of you even know who earwigs are. For those who don't know, earwigs are omnivorous insects from the order Dermoptera. They often inhabit rural areas near human dwellings, causing damage to agricultural and garden crops. On the other hand, they also eliminate other garden pests, such as aphids. Earwigs are mysterious creatures with a reputation that suggests keeping away from death. Most of us have grown up thinking that earwigs are dangerous, and their name is associated with the harm they can use to humans. But in reality, it's not the case. At this moment, an earwig entered the labyrinth with ants and was immediately met with resistance from the colony. The ants need to be cautious and wary of the earwig's pincers. Upon closer inspection, you can see that the ants are trying to stay away from these creatures. Most likely, the earwig emits a specific odor when attacked, which repels its enemies. Ants attack the earwig only in extreme cases. I am more than sure that after some time, the ants will drive the earwigs out into the arena, and they might even eat them as any ant colony needs protein. Earwigs are capable of flying, as they have fully developed wings. However, flying earwigs look clumsy, as their wings are not as effective for flight as, say, those of a fly. The most distinctive features of earwigs, making them easily recognizable insects, is their pincers like forceps, which protrude from their abdomen and are used for defense and during mating rituals. 
you can distinguish males from females based on the size of their forceps. Male forceps are longer and more curved compared to females. Primarily, earwigs use their forceps for self-defense. If an earwig encounters danger, it touches its abdomen, raising its weapons above its head. Additionally, the forceps are used to hold onto prey while eating. Here, one could say that they have hands growing out of their rear ends. Interestingly, the earwigs are introduced into the arena, found each other and gathered in a group within one of the labyrinth chambers. The question of how they managed to locate each other in such a vast labyrinth remains unanswered. Share your guesses in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. There will be plenty of interesting content here.